The next step with your final draft is you will be submitting it to the journal through their electronic system. You'll be asked to post your paper, and so do that. Don't send it as an email attachment to the editor because your paper will be lost. It must go through an electronic system that's set up by almost every journal, and then that will kick off the review process and all the steps that need to be taken by the editor and the journal. Also, you'll probably be asked at this point to sign some copyright release forms. These copyright forms are important, and they also might be forms for you to complete, stating that you have no conflict of interest, that you truly were an author of the paper, that you met the author guidelines, the criteria to be an author that we talked about in one of our previous modules. Remember, though, that in the end, the publisher will hold the copyright for your paper. Now, hopefully, you're getting your paper back from the editor. We hope that the reviews come back to the editor within a few weeks, but remember it could take months as the editor is trying to get the reviews completed and to get quality reviews. Hopefully, you'll get a message from the editor asking you to make revisions. If you get asked to make revisions, jump up for joy. That means we want to work with you, we like your paper, we think it's publishable, it just needs some fine tuning. I had a student once who called me and said, I'm so disappointed about my paper. And I was surprised. I said, I had read it for her and I thought it was great. And she said, yes, I was asked to revise. And I told her, you should be happy, happy, happy. When you're asked to revise, that means you're really going to have a successful paper as long as you do what the reviewers have requested. So don't expect to get a review back that says, accept it as is, nothing has to happen. That's not gonna, really, that's not gonna occur. But what's the most important thing for you to do is carefully read and follow the reviewer's comments. Initially, as a new author, you might be upset, you might be hurt, you might be angry about comments, but it's not about you, it's about your writing, and the comments are meant to be constructive. I'll tell you one of my own stories. When I was a new author, I submitted a paper, and this was before the days of electronic submission, and the paper came back in the mail and I opened it, and the top review said that the paper was awful. They really didn't like the paper at all, and I was crushed, and I was hurt, and I was angry, and I was upset, and I put the whole package back in the envelope and didn't look at it. And then one day I got the courage, about a week or so later, to open it up again and see what the other reviewer said, and to read the cover letter from the editor. And guess what? The other reviewer loved the paper, and the editor loved the paper, and the editor only asked for minor revisions. So it shows that there will be differences of opinion about your paper. So read everything that comes back to you. Don't make the mistake I did of just reading one and getting emotional about it and missing the other. So they will be asking for revisions, but carefully follow the suggestions that are required. When you return the paper to the editor with the revisions made, the editor is going to ask you to summarize how you address the reviewer's comments. You'll need to create a table, for example. In one column is the reviewer's suggestion, and in the next column is what did you do? Now, unfortunately, I've gotten papers back that the only thing the author did was correct typos, punctuation, and grammar, and never did any of the substantive changes required by the reviewers. If you take that approach, your paper's not going to be accepted. You must do the substantive work that is required by the reviewers. If there's a reason you do not want to follow one of the reviewers' requests, you must justify why you're not. And the editor will make a decision, is that a valid justification? If during the review process you have questions, contact the editor. I can remember once getting a paper back and one reviewer said to me, add more tables. The other reviewer said, you have too many tables, take some away. So the editor was very good in noting that and wrote a note to me saying, leave the tables you have. Don't add and don't take away. What you have is just fine. 
So if there's any conflicting comments from the reviewers, the editor should help you resolve conflicting comments. So don't hesitate to contact the editor if you have those types of concerns. The next slide shows an example of how you might summarize the comments from the reviewer and what you did. You cite exactly what page, where for example, you expanded your explanation, you made the changes, you fixed a table. So you're very specific to the editor saying that you did exactly what the reviewers requested.